Dear Trump supporters, so Trump isn't misogynistic or sexist? What definition of misogynistic or sexist do you use? Do you think it doesn't matter that his statements and attitudes and ways he treats people are blatantly misogynistic and sexist? Do you think his beliefs and desires and the way he treats people don't make any difference? Do you really think none of that matters because you're that anti-Hillary? So how about this? Does someone have to actually refer to themselves as racist in order for them to be racist? What about the white nationalists and black nationalists and racial separatists and racial supremacists out there who will jump up and down to declare that they're not racist? How about those KKK members who claim that they're not actually racist? Are they in actuality not really racist because they say they aren't? If they say the phrase, well, well, I don't have a hateful bone in my body, does that mean that they're not racist? Are you going to go into one of those, well, technically, arguments and state that racism requires an actual hatred or that it requires proof that someone has actually discriminated against someone and that their attitudes about others makes no difference? Where you might as well be stating that technically the sky isn't blue and stroke your ego with verbosity that's purposely trying to derail the concepts being talked about? So does Trump merely stating aloud that he respects women mean that he actually respects women? Does calling women in beauty contests Miss Piggy actually showing respect for women? If an Abrahamic religious guy says to a gay person, well, I love gay people, but I don't think you should have any rights because you're a heathen and you're going to burn in hell for eternity. Does it mean that he actually loves gay people? No? Why not? It works so well for Trump when he does similar things to women and Mexicans and a lot of minorities. He can state aloud that he loves all these people, but then shows in his actions and words he says elsewhere that he obviously does not love those people. And you think that's okay. So why can't someone else claim that they love gay people while wishing misery onto them and in some cases wishing death onto them? I mean, they're not hurting the gay person by saying that, and they have no power to change the laws, so they're just words, right? And words have no power unless we give it to them. And the words someone chooses to say don't actually reflect who they are, because, you know, saying horrible things on a repeated basis over decades is no actual reflection of how they feel about those things, but we should take them seriously when they state aloud that they're not racist or sexist or misogynistic, because at that point, Words are important, and everyone is supposed to bathe in the wonders of those virtue signals. Because, you know, it's Trump, and it's not Hillary. Bill Clinton, who was also a misogynistic slimeball, who made life harder for gay people than any other president, and yet he's, for some reason, praised by the gay community, he went through impeachment hearings over some sexual relations, but at least he didn't brag about it and call it locker room talk. But he went through impeachment trials over that, and yet Trump can make these horrible statements, call it locker room talk, and we're all supposed to just let it go? I don't think so. Have any of you ever known a gay man who says things like, well, no man is completely straight. I can get any man I want because I know what I'm doing. I've known quite a few. They usually get out of this phase, but not always. But how does it make you feel when you hear someone say that? Does it make you upset in any way? Does it make you uncomfortable? If it does, and you don't have a problem with Trump saying similar things about women, can you see the hypocrisy here? People will say that Trump's statements were pale in comparison to what is talked about in locker rooms elsewhere. Okay, and that's supposed to make it better somehow? Really? So you're essentially saying that because some guys are way more misogynistic that I shouldn't worry about Trump's misogyny because I shouldn't question or criticize a presidential candidate that you happen to like because insert 4chan insult here because that makes someone intelligent. Hmm, can you imagine what the Trumpsters are going to be like if Trump actually becomes president? We'll be back to 2001 to 2003, where Republicans, including news anchors, regularly told people that they were un-American if they said bad things about Bush after 9-11. Trump is like the young and stupid rich frat boy prankster life of the party in rich circles at the college kind of guy who could feasibly rape someone and his rich friends would simply cover for him. Where I could stand in the middle of Fifth Avenue and shoot somebody and I wouldn't lose any voters, okay? It's like incredible. But... You know, he never actually grew out of that mindset like most people do. Lather was 30 years old today. They took away all of his toys. 
Trump makes it so much worse than an actual frat boy because it goes well beyond a college. And it's all about using both his financial position and his status to treat people like shit, especially women. To me, Trump is like this guy. Can you picture Obama saying that same stuff that Trump is calling locker room talk? How about Jimmy Carter? How about John F. Kennedy? Trump is a guy who we will never know who he actually is because, to draw a parallel, he's like a YouTuber with a really strong persona who always remains in the mask of that persona and always remains in character when in literally any public setting, even going to an ATM machine or something, if he's even willing to lower himself to doing that kind of thing himself anymore. This is a guy who is obsessed with being the center of attention. This is a guy who can try to sell you just about anything and give you a line of bullshit as to why he's doing things. He's like the Donald Rumsfeld of the business community, and we're somehow supposed to trust him? The President of the United States is the main figurehead for a country. The President is the spokesperson for the country. Do we want some spoiled, arrogant, rich, almost 70-year-old, grumpy, rude frat boy being the spokesperson for this country and treating the rest of the world like we're in some cheesy black and white TV western? Do we want someone who thinks so highly of himself to be in the ultimate position of thinking highly of himself as president so he can care even more about thinking even more highly of himself than taking care of actual issues in ways that can actually accomplish something positive? And will he just hire people to do that for him so he can feed us a line of bullshit as to what's actually going on like a Donald Rumsfeld statement to the press? Do we want someone who appears to be trying to feebly imitate the hyper-masculine values of Vladimir Putin? No matter if some of my conspiratorial, theoretical ideas about what could be coming are true or not, if Hillary is elected, she is simply going to continue a path of corruption that we've been on for a while. It's a continuation of the same shit, shit that we can survive for at least the next four years. We can survive a Hillary presidency unless she takes us to war with Russia. As I said, this corruption is something that has been going on since well before I was born. Reagan is when the corruption started to go into overdrive. This is a path that we have been on, and I understand that sometimes we need to do something to shake us out of that pattern. We need something extreme to shake us out of that pattern, but at what cost are we willing to do this? I think a scorched earth policy is a terrible one, and that's exactly what we'd be playing a game of Russian roulette in if we elect Trump. But some of you don't actually have a problem with him at all. And to those who don't have a real problem with him at all, you're basically saying, it's okay to treat people like shit if you have a lot of power. It's okay to brag about using your power to control people in extreme ways. It's okay to purposely go out of your way to refer to women and minorities in disparaging ways. It's okay to act like a spoiled rich frat boy at almost 70 years old. It's okay to act like vanity smurf, and it's okay to take comments about things like small hands seriously enough to address them publicly. It's okay to threaten to sue a heckler because they said something negative about you on mainstream media. Because, you know, freedom of speech is important unless they say something negative about you, and then you can start acting like the YouTuber named Atheism is Unstoppable. And really, that's the big thing that scares me. It's the fact that whoever we have as president seriously affects our culture. The anti-idealist, anti-diversity, pro-bully, pro-harassment mindset that has been creeping up more and more will come out at full swing if he becomes president, which will put a lot of gay men back in the closet, which will make a lot of trans people never come out of the closet, it will make a lot of black people feel even worse about themselves as we socially head towards those days when many Christian Americans feel that the United States was great somehow. You know, the 1950s, because that's the goal, after all, to return us to those non-existent days when we were great. Because America, USA, USA, make America white and right again. <laughs> 